Hello and welcome to another session of our language mantras channel. This is the third session of uh, our advanced English course. We have been talking in different aspects of noun. Today, uh, let's have a look at uh, how a plural noun is formed. It appears quite obvious that a concrete noun will have a corresponding plural number because a concrete noun is based on something that has a physical body. And uh, what about uh, abstract noun? An abstract noun is based on a certain notion or some idea. Therefore, it may not be always possible to have uh, a corresponding uh, you know, plural form of, a, of an abstract noun. Whatever, ordinarily, a plural form is formed by adding an S or ES to the existing uh, singular noun. It looks very easy, but uh, sometimes there are certain tricky areas that uh, you know make uh, things quite difficult. And uh, it is uh, something that we should take a special care of. Uh, a few examples I give you. This for one, number one, uh, there are you know several foreign words. Frequently you will come across foreign words in the English language. Now those foreign words actually tend to retain their original plural numbers. <coughs> and again, uh, native speakers or English speakers try to appropriate them and make them look like uh, English words. So there is a tension between these two, uh, you know, attempts. Now, for example, agenda. Agenda is actually a plural number. It has come from a Latin origin, that is agendam. Agendam is the singular number. Agenda is the plural number. But uh, this word, agenda or agenda, whatever it is, uh, you know, it does not look like English words. It's plural form in a case. So, uh, the British people try to make it agendas for its plural. So, already we have agenda as a plural form. And then again, another plural form is invented by the British people, that is agendas. So, we should take care. Uh, at least uh, maybe somebody is following the old pattern and writing agenda as the plural form, it is not all wrong. But if somebody writes agenda as plural form, agendas as plural form, then again uh, it's you know acceptable nowadays. Now come to number two. There are certain words that uh, do not have its plural number at all. For example, fish. Then we have uh, you know, deer. Then another important word frequently we use, that is madam. In fact, madam does not have a plural counterpart. In French, they say madam and madam. And madam is established plural form. But in English, madam has no plural forms. So we have to take care of it. Number three, there are several innocent looking words. You know, they are very much singular, but they look like plural numbers, such as aesthetics, statistics, economics. So these are very confusing. If we go by this logic, then there must be an S or ES at the end of a word to make it plural. Then aesthetics is a plural word. No, aesthetic is very much, uh, it's uh, an it's a you know singular number. Then there is the opposite side. There are again some innocent looking words. They are very much plural, but look like singular. Policeman, for example, or clergy. Normally, we do not use the word policeman. We say police. Now, if it is police, then it is plural. For example, we give, an, uh, we give a sentence. Uh, the police are cordoning the area. This is perfectly fine. There is no problem. 
but the polish this word polish does not look like a plural word and then this is the same with clergy also clergy man and clergy men so these are the areas that makes things a little bit confusing especially for those you know or people who are learning english as a foreign language or so now this part is very fine now let's see uh, a few rules how to uh, you know make it uh, make a selection whether you would be using uh, s or es there are several rules or formula if you would like to say so let's see there are we have uh, six rules here there are more than six rules we'll come to them later but at present uh, we can discuss these six rules so number 1 if uh, a word is you know normally a word is made plural by adding s book books table tables the the theory of adding an s go very goes very well so book become books table become tables but when the ending of a word is in s x s h and c h remember these four numbers s x s h and c h that means a word ending in any of these four words or combination of words then it would be e s rather than single s example glass we have two s s s double s so it is glasses e s then box we have x at the end therefore it would be boxes e s bush s h so it would be bushes e s then we have bench it would be benches e s then come to number 3 if the word ends in y that means final y and that y is preceded by final y preceded by a vowel then it would be s rather than es final y preceded by a vowel boy boys boy the word boy ends in y last two. letter is y and before that there is a vowel o so it would be boys only s not es then we have key k e y e is a vowel and vowel is followed by y therefore make it s keys similar with day days now you just uh, try to compare with another word that is fly last word is y but that y is preceded by l in that case it does not follow this logic that would be f l i e s flies so y preceded by a vowel like you uh, know a day ki boy will take s for its plural number now final o o is a vowel sound so if a word ends on o and preceded by a consonant then it will take es cargo 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 is car goes in its plural negro negros es eco ecos then come to number 5 final double o i o e o and often o preceded by consonants take s double o i o and e o that means almost two vowel sounds coming together double o i o and e o and often o preceded by consonant take s for their plural numbers bamboo double o is there. so bamboo bamboos single s curio curios then 
Cameo. Cameos. Piano. Pianos. This is so simple. Now come to the last uh, uh, logic. Uh, that is final O taking both S or ES. If the word aims on O, then it may either take S or ES. There is you know enough liberty for this word. Calico. Calicos. Yes and OS, both are possible. Portico, porticos and porticos. OS and OES. So these are the basic norms or rules or formulae. Now we have uh, more logics to come. Maybe next day we will take them up. But today, these things, these are the basic rules that should be very well remembered so that we do not make uh, silly mistakes. Now, uh, in the English language, the number is uh, more important than gender. We do not have many things to do uh, with the gender in a sentence, but number is very important because always what happens uh, in the construction of a sentence, the verb, it must agree with the subject. So if the subject is a singular noun or equivalent to singular noun, then the verb must agree with that singular noun. I think uh, this is enough today. We have so many rules and regulations. So we should try to uh, make a note of all these things and uh, we'll see what comes later. There are so many other things we can discuss. So uh, for, I think uh, it's time we end here. Goodbye. Have a nice time.